Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about FMCW altimeter. So in the last class I have started the FMCW altimeter. What do you mean by FMCW and uh, how it is different from the CW radar and uh, how it is used to detect the object's velocity and as well as range. Okay. So again just I will give you what is the use of FMCW. So FMCW stands for frequency modulated continuous wave as the transmitted signal is of frequency modulated signal it is named as frequency modulated CW radar that means continuous wave we are taking that is being modulated with in terms of frequency okay and the main application of this FMCW is to find the height of to find the height of any object especially moving objects okay so fmcw the main application is to find the height of the moving object from the earth surface so when you are calculating the height from the earth surface such type of radars are known as altimeters altimeters so altimeters are nothing but used to calculate height of the object from the earth surface used to find the height of the object from the earth surface Okay, and the main application of FMCW altimeter is to calculate the Doppler frequency component and as well as beat, uh, what is that, range frequency in the form of beat frequency. So there it gives a difference frequency that is beat frequency which is having internally two parameters like uh, range frequency and as well as Doppler frequency. So using this range frequency we can calculate the range and using this Doppler frequency we can calculate the velocity of the target. Okay, so now in this topic, we are going to see how an FMCW radar can be utilized in the form of an altimeter, nothing but from the air surface. No difference is there. Okay, suppose if the radar system is like this, if the radar system is like this, if object is here, okay, then if while uh, the signal is being transmitted and the signal is received back. So, in this way, we can calculate the distance between the radar system and the object that is nothing but range. Suppose, instead of taking in the horizontal direction, suppose if you are calculating the height from the air surface, like uh, suppose one plane is moving, one plane is moving like this, it is having some radar system in it. Some radar system is being incorporated in this plane and this radar system transmits signal onto the earth surface and this earth surface whenever the signal touches the earth surface the signal is reflected back and collected by the radar system. So in this type of operation we are going to calculate what is the amount of height from the earth surface the plane is moving. Okay, that is the main purpose why we are using the FMCW, ultimate, FMCW radar system as an altimeter. That means it is used to, the main application is it is used to calculate the height of the aeroplane which is moving from the earth surface. Okay, what is the, in which, at what height the plane is moving. Okay, that can be calculated using this FMCW radar. Same operation, just it transmits the signal onto the air surface. Again, the signal will be reflected from the air surface that will be collected and giving what is the height. Horizontally, we can say it is range and vertically it is being set to be height. Okay, so that is the main application. Now, we, I, I will explain in the next slide, I will explain the block diagram of FMCW altimeter. So, before going into that, the main the standard FMCW block diagram, if you remember, we are having an isolated transmitter and as well as receiver for this block diagram, FMCW block diagram. But whereas in the standard CW block diagram, we don't have standard CW radar system, we don't have this type of isolation. So that has been covered in the FMCW radar as transmitter and receivers are isolated, uh, antennas are being isolated. So there is no problem with the antenna isolation. But what about the input signal frequency? What is the amount of input signal frequency that is entering into the receiving section? Okay, I told you already, if the input, if the input frequency of receiver is less 
then flicker noise is more okay if the input signal frequency if the input frequency after mixing if it is having a less frequency then there results a noise called flicker noise because the flicker noise flicker noise is proportional to 1 by f input whole power alpha alpha is approximately equal to 1 so f in of the receiver f in of the receiver so if the input phase signal frequency is less then flicker noise will be more so what we need to do we need to increase the input signal frequency if you see the basic block diagram of fmcw radar in the transmitting section we have an fm transmitter the signal leakage signal is also entering into the receiver receiver in the first stage we have a mixer so what is the purpose of mixer this mixer is used to mix the incoming signal coming from the free space and the leakage signal coming from the fm transmitter so these two are mixed together and produces a bead frequency of v so bead frequency is very less like your doppler frequency plus some range frequency that is in the order of kilohertz only not more than that so what we need to do we need to increase this doppler uh, we need to increase this bead frequency which is entering at the receiver input so that's why what we need to do what is the what is the method we have used in the cw radar the same and similar method we are using to improve the input signal frequency so that the flicker noise can be avoided so what we are doing we are adding fif intermediate frequency intermediate frequency is added to avoid this flicker noise okay so this is the background of this fmcw altimeter uh, why we are directly going to the fmcw altimeter with the intermediate frequency addition uh, rather than which we have used in the fmcw basic block diagram so this is the block diagram of fmcw altimeter so in the transmitting section whatever the sections we have in the case of uh, basic standard fmcw block diagram here also we have the same uh, see here in the transmitting section we have fmcw transmitter and modulator so modulator is used to modulate the incoming signals like uh, a carrier signal and message signal these two are multiplied together and uh, amplified through this um, fm transmitter and then given to the free space okay now see this f naught previously we have considered in the cw radar it was f naught but now we are modulating the signal in terms of frequency so the frequency of the transmitted signal f naught is varying with in terms of in terms of time period okay so the frequency is changing with respect to time with respect to time i told you a triangular modulation is used so that means what happens triangular modulation the shape whatever the triangular is having in the same shape only the frequency f naught is varying okay so the f naught is a function of time we need to write f naught as a function of time because it is varying with respect to time f naught and t here it is f naught okay so now f naught is varying with respect to time so that's why it is f naught of t which is transmitted to the free space now the same signal is also connecting as a leakage signal towards the receiver but meanwhile this type of setup was not there in the previous section these two these three blocks mixer lock loss letter and sideband filter these three blocks were not there in the previous main standard block diagram now we are adding these additional blocks to improve the input signal frequency in the name of uh, what is that intermediate frequency so that intermediate frequency is connected uh, is coming from the local oscillator local oscillator which is used to generate an intermediate frequency so that intermediate frequency is added with the transmitter signal frequency f naught of t so f naught of t plus fif and when you are mixing there will be three different frequencies can be generated along with one central frequency that is f naught of t and it is f naught of t plus fif and this one is f naught of t minus fif so this sideband f f naught of t minus fif and f naught of t plus fif these two are having same information 
so side band filters are there side band filters both side bands are having same information so what is the use of use uh, carrying another signal redundancy is there so we need to eliminate the side band and keeping only one side band that is f naught of t minus f i f or f plus f whatever it is you can choose any one of these for example here it is considered as minus i f and during the reception what type of signal we are receiving we are transmitting f naught of t so we will receive from the object after certain time t so f naught of t minus t f naught of t minus t this t determines the range or delay what is the amount of time taken by the signal to release into the free space and collected back by the receiver okay so this indicates the delay of the signal the time gap f naught of t minus t and this f naught of t minus f i f are being added with this uh, received signal so then it will be f naught f i f plus f b what do you mean by f b f b is nothing but beat frequency f b is nothing but beat frequency so this beat frequency is, can be written as f naught of t minus t minus f naught of t that means the difference between the received signal and the transmitted signal. So as it is having some IFI of intermittent frequency component, it is being amplified by IF amplifier and then given to balance detector. Balance detector. What do you mean by balance detector? Balance detector is used to eliminate the intermittent frequency which has been added in the transmitting section. So here this FIF has to be eliminated here. We don't need FIF. We are adding FIF only to eliminate the Flicker noise. So FAF is detected here and only FB. So FB plus FIF. So FIF is eliminated here. Now it is FB. Okay. So this FB is connected to low noise amplifier, low frequency amplifier, and then given to switched frequency counter and average frequency counter. So here the FB is amplified later as it is a low frequency we are using a low frequency amplifier I told you already this FB is internally having FR plus R minus FD okay FR plus R minus FD so range frequency plus or minus Doppler frequency now in the previous uh, diagram when I was explaining this FMCW altimeter I told you two equations FB up and f beat down so what do you mean by f b of beat frequency during incremental period in this way okay we are changing the carrier frequency with respect to time in the order of a triangular waveform so during this rising period we call it as up and during this falling period we call it as down so f b up is equal to what do you mean by f b up it is the average between it is the uh, sorry it is nothing but um, uh, we can write like this fb up plus fb down by 2 this is the range frequency fr so in the similar way f d doppler frequency is equal to minus fb uh, fb down minus fb up by 2 so it is the average and here it is switched frequency counter we are using switched frequency counter to calculate this fd okay so we need two separate cycle counters that is one is for average frequency counter another one is the switched frequency counter so using this average frequency counter we are having the range frequency and using this switched frequency counter we are having the Doppler frequency. So that type of measurement is also being added in the incorporated in the block diagram itself. So switched frequency counter, I told you already see here, switched frequency counter, which component we are calculating? FD. FD, nothing but Doppler frequency. So using this Doppler frequency component, we can, we can calculate the relative velocity to VR by lambda. So once F, FD is found, then we can calculate VR, relative velocity VR. So Switched frequency counter that is used to calculate the Doppler velocity and the average frequency counter that is used to calculate the range R. That means it is FR and it is FT. Okay. So this is what the block diagram of FMCW 
altimeter ultimately we are calculating the doppler frequency and as well as range frequency okay that thereby we can calculate the range and as well as velocity this is fmcw altimeter thank you